We begin today not with what you do know, that it's very cold outside for most of the country, and that former President Trump is looking strong in Iowa, based on our reporting and state polls. We want to instead look at the bigger picture, that all three top GOP contenders begin the year with a lead over President Biden in our CBS News poll. Former President Trump is up to 50 to 48 percent. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has a three-point margin, 51 to 48 percent. Those two are both within the margin of error. But it's former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley who has the biggest lead, eight points, over President Biden at 53 to 45 percent. We turn now to CBS News Executive Director of Elections and Surveys, Anthony Salvanto, to tell us more. Anthony, good to have you here. Good morning. That's a pretty dramatic advantage for Haley over Biden. Why is she outperforming him instead of Trump or DeSantis? Republican voters think it's Trump who has the best chance for them to beat Biden. Maybe they haven't seen this poll yet. But look, Haley is on qualities that people say they want in a president, better or about even with Biden. Things like empathy, things like ability to compromise and toughness, where she leads and does just as well as the other two, DeSantis and Trump, right? The other part of this, Margaret, is just on straight demographics. She does well with women. She does better with independents. She does better getting people to cross over from Biden 2020 to her. All of that reflects some of Biden's underperformance with his Democratic base. And then finally, this point on the economy. We still see voters telling us, really by two to one, that they feel like they might be worse off under Biden than better off financially. And that's important because it reflects this ongoing sting of what's happened with him and his ratings after inflation. Even though voters are starting to say, like, they think the economy is starting to stabilize, a little bit of improvement there. He's not getting the political benefit from that, partly because it's about the rate of change. Inflation is slowing, but prices are still high. Right. And that doesn't look like it's, his argument is resonating that well right now. But voters may not see this hypothetical head-to-head matchup um, because your poll found President Trump with his biggest lead among GOP primary voters nationwide thus far this cycle, 55 points. What's driving it? Indeed. Well, look, some of this is he just spans different parts of the party and has appeal. So for Republicans who want a tax cut, he's their guy. For Republicans who are MAGA, who want a more combative approach, who want that culture war, he's their guy. And part of it, just by the numbers, is he's got more strong supporters than anybody else, people who say they're considering only him, who will not change their minds. And that, throughout this, this campaign, has put a floor under his support that's been really hard for any other candidate to shake. And look, that part, in some sense, is not news. Mm -hmm. But contextually, as we go into this primary season, it's important to then reiterate that this is something and a phenomenon with this showing loyalty to an individual that we really have not seen for people in polling in U.S. politics other than for Donald Trump and that MAGA base. So what about the content of what he is saying and his platform? I mean, he constantly says, I am your retribution, for example. What do voters think that means? Well, the important thing here is comparing people who call themselves MAGA to the rest of the party, because the MAGA base is much more likely to say they like that idea, the idea of punishing or going after his political opponents if he gets into office. Um, these are the kinds of things that get the other campaigns to talk about authoritarianism, things that are potential threats to democracy. But in, in the eyes of the MAGA base, they bought the narrative that the election was stolen. They want to see pardons for the January 6th rioters. And all of that means to them that they've had something taken from them and they're trying to push back against it. And Donald Trump is their vehicle for that. He's channeling something there. Yes. But what about uh, rhetoric like his remarks that immigrants are poisoning the blood of our country? A majority of Republicans say they agree with his statements. And it, we looked at it both ways. When we told them Donald Trump said it, even more agreed with it, so he has that effect, but they agreed with it anyway, even when we didn't note that Donald Trump had said it. And look, that's important because it also speaks- that's tremendous. 
It, it is, and I, I think it speaks not just to issues with the border, but also to larger issues of race in this campaign. And I'll point it out this way. When we ask people what they think of diversity efforts in the U.S., the people who feel that diversity efforts in the U.S. have gone too far are overwhelmingly voting for Trump. The people who feel that they haven't gone far enough are overwhelmingly for Biden. And that tells you what that role of race is in the campaign. And that's an important dynamic, not just when we look at the strong Trump support, but what sets up one of the key narratives going forward in the 24 campaign. Fascinating. Anthony Salvanto, thank you. Thank you.